Professor Sabrin, once again, it's a pleasure sitting with you. And we are, I think, coming to the close to the end, if not the end of this series. As I don't know if the people at home are aware, but you are one of the ambassadors for the Parental Alienation Awareness International Network. And of course, the network is um, the foundation or the founder of the network is Mr. Sanji Prasad, who is also the is a major role player in the organization. He's not just there behind the scenes, but he is also having conversations with people. He is mm -hmm. guiding people. He is giving advice. The other ambassadors, as I mentioned, are in various fields. So we have a, le a person who specializes in legal matters. We have people who are specialized in psycholo psychology, psychological matters. You are, of course, the spiritual expert. <laughs> so you give more spiritual oriented advice. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some of your, some of the feedback mm -hmm. that you have had with this series from people who have sought your advice or mm -hmm. seen you on TV? Yeah, so we had quite a number of people, I think it's so many, the list is too long, that have contacted us and uh, had asked questions and seek advice, yes. And uh, somehow, whatever, we were able to, um, to guide them with whatever advice we were able to give them had worked for them. And uh, people are get now beginning to learn about this program. Many people does not know. So one is telling the other and the other is telling the other and this is the way it is going on. But from the, the Sankhya TV when you all put it on Facebook, that is how people come in, uh, more in touch. I mean the people who does not look at Sankhya on the television, they're getting it from the Facebook um, online uh, on, yes yeah. from social media of course we play into social media a lot and yes there is uh, one or two cases where the father especially father somehow only men call oh. <laughs> they contacted me yes early early morning and so on they will call and say no this is a situation and I will just try to calm him down and the good thing is that he will say no sister it's not how much you tell me or what you told me, but the way you speak to me, I feel a lot of calm. I, I feel so peaceful that he could just listen and listen and listen. So one thing is not only what we say to people, but I think the manner in which we say whatever we are saying. Because if I come on television, for example, and I'm telling you, okay, you have to be at peace, you know, you have to love each other in order to heal and so on, then I am telling you to be at peace, but I myself, I am not at peace. Then what am I telling you? What am I teaching you? For example, if someone call me for help and he is, let's say, uh, not violent, but he's so upset and he is angry and he is, you know, in that kind of, what you call that kind of um, mental, like unsta unstable, mentally unstable, and he is really worried and all this kind of thing. And I speak to him in that same tone of voice that he is speaking to me. I am not doing him anything good. But he is, he is angry and he is upset and he is, you know, in, not in a good mood, and he's talking to me, then when I have to speak to him, I have to speak to him in such a tone of voice with so much calm, with so much serenity and peace and love that this energy that I am sending to him be enough to calm him down. And this is what has happened in, on many occasions. They were telling me at the end, you know, it's not what I told them or how much I told them but how I told them was enough to calm them down. So even if at that moment we did not solve the problem, because of course you cannot solve a problem on phone, at least at that time, those individuals were able to be calm, to get calm, to, to be at peace. 
and when they got at peace, so when they got calm, they were able to see the situations from a very different perspective. And that was the beginning of the healing. And so when they contacted us again, they will say, we'll give a lot of thanks, of course. They appreciated the program, they appreciate what we are doing for them. And of course, I'm sure there'll be more programs like these that will help individuals from a different perspective also, as you mentioned, from the legal, legal perspective and the psychological perspective, all of which is necessary. Hmm. Now you mentioned that a lot of the people that call are male. The majority are male. And Whoever few, called me were males, yes. A few females. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you think that that is so? Um, I think that they were the ones who were in need more. Because, you know, men do feel a sense of disadvantage. You know, we should not only say that men are, only men are violent. Men are violent, yes, but you can also find women who are violent. Both are violent. Um, because we mostly hear men being violent. That does not mean to say women are not. So men are suffering in their own way also. And because society in general have in their mind this perspective that all men are violent, they are not getting that kind of support or cooperation hmm, to help them in their suffering also. Because in everyone's mind, men are violent. But men also go through their silent suffering and there isn't much help for them as there are for women. So wherever they could get help, they seek that help. And the few who had called, and the few who I had spoken to, they felt very well at the end, very good. They felt that, yes, they got help. And they felt that, yes, this is their support. This is what they need to help them to get out of whatever they were suffering from. And that was a good feedback. Yes, they were very appreciative, actually. Now, what do you mean by help? That, okay, well, let's say, mm -hmm. A man calls, well, it's predominantly men, but mm -hmm. so someone calls you. Is it that they are seeking someone to be, let's say, understanding? Or is it that they are actually looking for someone to give them some kind of new Advice, yeah, yeah. They were looking for advice, actually. So I need some advice, I need some help. You know, I am in this situation right now. I have this amount of years that my, my, the wife doesn't allow me to see my son or my daughter, my children, whatever. And she's doing so many you know, wrong things and bad things and my child need me and oh, it's a whole long big story. But there isn't people really like uh, available to give an ear, if you understand what I mean, to you know a listening ear to these kinds of people. And so if you could give them that listening ear and give them that attention that they're seeking at this moment to, let's say, vent out. Vent out means to clear up or to um, pour out whatever they are going through. So here you have someone who is willing to listen to this one who is suffering, who is in pain, who is in sorrow. You listen to him. And by him just clearing up whatever he has in mind, whatever he is going through, is a form of healing. To give a listening ear, to give someone attention, is supporting, is giving support, is helping someone to heal. Because the moment you start, let's say, taking out, pouring out whatever you have there in your mind settled or hoarded because there's a lot of tension there's a lot of hurt there's a lot of pain a lot of violence and a lot of negativity there that people are hoarding and they don't have who to tell it to because it seems as though generally there there aren't those kinds of people around who could really like sit and really listen to them. 
hear their stories, listen to their pains, let them take it out. And so here we are, making ourselves, let's say, available, the present, to listen to these individuals. Let them speak whatever they want to, because that simple speaking out is the first step towards healing. And so when these individuals finish talking to you, they feel light. They feel, yes, it is worth living now. And those two phrases is enough to you know, give us satisfaction that, okay, whatever we are doing is worth it. And I feel that is a very good accomplishment. Mm. Why do you think people mm. suffer when they are going through these kind of, this treatment, for example, the parental alienation, mm. well, phenomenon, what that is Why happening. do they suffer? What, what is it in the human being that mm -hmm. causes the suffering? Is it cultural? Is it in us, within us, that we do this? Um, I think it's more emotional. Why? Uh, let me give an example. You know, the birds, for example, they come and they, when they're looking to build their nest, firstly they will go and search out a spot. You know, they will go from branch to branch, tree to tree, and they will look maybe even the house. And when they find a spot, then they will start bringing their twigs one by one and start putting them together and they start building their nest there. And after they build their nest, next one will come, two of them. So here we have a pair of birds building a nest. After they build their nest and they settle down there, they produce two or four, whatever. Hmm? Those two and four will then get big and they will grow. They will fly away. And this couple here will keep on keeping that nest and continue producing. So human beings have this nature of taking, absorbing all kinds of hurts and pains, hmm? some of which they see, whatever they see, they take it and they put it inside here, means in your mind. And you see one scene, or you hear one word of criticism or insult, or whatever. And you bring it and you put it inside here, which means you bring it in your mind. And you keep it there. And each time you see that individual, you remember that insult. That person insulted you once. But each time you remember that insult, how many times you insult yourself? Or each time you see the situation that gave you pain once, each time you remember it, what are you doing to yourself? You're bringing pain to yourself. So you start minding it, just like the two birds. You are carrying this now for who knows how many weeks and months and years. And what you tell yourself, I could never forget that day that you told me this. So what you're telling yourself, you will never forget it. So because you will never forget it, it's there on your mind all the time, causing you more pain, causing you more sorrow and suffering and hurt. So who is causing you pain? Who is causing you more sorrow? Is it the one who insulted you once? Or the scene that you had seen once? That person insulted you once and he went about it. Went about his business and he forgot about it. But you are here carrying it for who knows how many years. I know the situation of this girl who was abused when she was five years of age. And now she's 35 years. So, she came to one of our sessions and in the session, now she's 35 years, she told me that, you know, she was abused when she was five years and she could have never forgotten that abuse, physical abuse. Now, whoever it was abused her physically when she was five. That person have long passed on. But this child, this person keep that memory constantly fresh in her mind 
for the rest of the 30 years. So for how many years did she abuse herself? One person abused her once when she was five. That person had since then passed on, but she had carried that for 30 years. What has she done to herself for 30 years? She brought more abuse, more pain, more sorrow, more suffering upon herself simply by keeping it there and minding it. So who is hurting you the most? Who is giving you the most pain? Who is giving you the most sorrow? We are doing it. We are doing it. And you hear people saying, I could never forget this. So they justify the fact that they don't want to forget it. They don't want you to be happy. If you justify the fact that you will keep, you remember this for your whole life, they say that. I will remember this for as long as I live. Which means you're justifying the fact that for as long as you live, you're going to carry that pain. So who is hurting you the most? You are hurting yourself. More than anyone else hurting you. Because someone can tell you or insult you once. And for the rest of your life, you are carrying that insult. Who is to be blamed for your pains? Perspective is a big thing. Well, what about... What about when, for example, in the parental alienation um, aspect, mm -hmm. where you are dealing with someone who mm -hmm. is doing things to you on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and you say, well, of course, I'm going to hold on to this because they did this yesterday and mm -hmm. last month and last week and mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So, but you have someone who's doing things to you daily. Mm -hmm. Then how do they... With that. Mm -hmm. So if it is something on a daily basis, of course, it's a different matter because here you are living with something constantly. You could decide if you want to continue living in that situation or you want to leave the situation. But keeping one situation which happened, I don't know how many years ago, constantly in the mind, it's a different, issue. It's a different matter. But living constantly in the same situation, of course, you should decide if this is what you want to live with for the rest of your life. Because it's not only that you're keeping it here, but on a daily basis you're seeing the same thing happening. Like for example, you know, when the men take alcohol and they come home, every day is a new abuse. Every day it's abuse. Verbal abuse, you know, the curse and they get on and whatever. So you could decide, you have to decide if this is what you want to live for the rest of your life. It Make decisions. Talk to the individual, get help. In that, institution, in that uh, situation, you should seek help. Now you are saying, well, the, the people who are living with the daily situation should seek advice. And seek help. Yeah. Seek help. Yes. And that is what we have been trying to do with mm -hmm. this program is Give some sort of beginning level of uh, valuable information. Mm -hmm. Now, for from your experience with the people that have contacted you, mm -hmm. uh, do you think it is something that people should depend on, let's say, um, the, the authorities, for example, the courts or the social welfare uh, mm -hmm. systems? Should they depend on these establishments to help them or should they seek some sort of what we might call private for example the pain network is it mm -hmm. private mm -hmm. in terms of it is not run by the government mm -hmm. i think whatever could give them the help that they need they should go there and, and some clari people just to clarify alcohol and drugs is not help <laughs> uh, <yeah>, of course <laughs> it's not helping of course of course different people will have different um now we say here tastes, which means different uh, choices. 
And so whatever you think is the best for you, you go there. If you feel comfortable going for legal help, it's fine. Or psychological help or whatever help institutions the government have. You feel that is where you that, that could help you, it's fine. If you feel pain or the management of pain could be of help to you, then you can contact Mr. Sanjeev Prasad, of course. So if you feel that you can get help from PAIN, which is Parental Alienation Awareness International Network, then of course, through Sankhya TV, you can contact Mr. Sanjeev Prasad, who is the president of PAIN International. And of course, the number also, you can find it in Sankhya TV or from the management of Sankhya TV. So I want to invite you now to a few minutes of meditation. Meditation is a healing process where I learn to use my thoughts, which are my own energies, to heal myself. Understanding that the majority of pain, of sorrow, and suffering that we experience are simply because of the way we think. Understanding the way I think is a very important. And so as I turn my attention within myself, I take a look at how am I internally. How is my mind at this moment? Am I happy? And if I am not happy, then who or what is disturbing, destroying my happy state of mind? There is a saying that happiness is the best medicine, which means if I want to heal myself, if I want to go beyond my pains, my sorrow, my suffering, then I should program my mind to be happy no matter what. Understanding that by creating thoughts of hurt and pain, I am doing more damage to myself. I begin to create more positive, more peaceful, and more happy thoughts so that you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, as well as physically, physically, I can always be at peace and be happy. The word meditation derives from a Latin word, medere, which means to heal or to cure. So when I begin to meditate, I begin to heal myself. Because the process of meditation helps me to see myself, to understand myself better. It helps me to take better decisions, to choose wise. It helps me to be at peace. Thank you very much.
Ampex Limited, networking societies for a better future.